Today on the table, I have the 930 SPX and the ATAC. Both these firearms are chambered in 12 gauge and they do take three on shells. You will see a price split of $442. The 930 being about $442 more than the ATAC. The 930 has an 18 and a half inch barrel. The ATAC has a 20 inch barrel. The 930 has a higher capacity. Yeah, it looks like the ATAC has a more capacity, but because this is an imported shotgun, this extender, it's actually fake. There's a crimp in here and it's below the threading too, so you can't like cut it off and just put on a new tube extender. Both have sling swivel studs. The 930 uses your standard American, uh, some metal screw-in stud that you can just hook whatever you want onto it. The ATAC uses this style, which looks similar to like an AR-15 military style sling swivel stud, but the gap, it's way too narrow. The only thing you're gonna fit on there is like a camera strap. So they're basically useless and yeah, you probably won't be able to use any sort of modern sling on there. Uh, your 930 has a big old fat charging handle. I like that a lot. The ATAC is long. But it's skinnier. I mean, I really don't see a huge advantage to either one. I just think the one on the 930 looks a lot cooler. Now the 930 uses a, well this particular 930 uses a pistol grip stock. I strongly recommend if you're gonna get the 930s or anything Mossberg, you do not go with a pistol grip stock because the safety's in the wrong position. So instead of just being able to click it off, you have to break your hand position, operate the safety, and then go back down. The ATAC uses a standard style safety. You can hit this from your normal shooting position. Good to go on that. Now the actual functionality of the firearms, they are different. The Mossberg just uses a single button. The ATAC has two different buttons. Now what these are for, I got some dummy rounds right here. And say you're running buckshot and you need to switch to slugs, you just pull this back and it empties the chamber but it does not feed another round. So then you can come in with your slug. Drop it in and then you did a changeover. Now both these shotguns have a really big issue. How in the name of tactical this issue even still exists, and I see it across almost all semi-automatic shotgun platforms, even Benelli and Beretta. Now they kind of address the issue. What they do is they gate the button, but I don't like that because if I do run out of ammo and I have to grab one and pop it in, I want a nice big fat button to hit. I don't want it gated. But basically what happens All right, so it's in a fire position on safety, exactly how you'd carry it. Say you bump this button, you just made a double feed. The best way to handle this, because you got your two rounds in there, is hold your bolt open, come into the chamber, and then pop the one round back in the feed tube and then it'll chamber around. And I just think that's horrible to have a button on the side of my semi-automatic shotgun that potentially makes it a single shot. And both of them do this, even this one. Double feed. And why this has not been remedied or resolved, I don't know. Like I said, Benelli and Beretta, they both just gate the button so it's harder to accidentally hit. I'm not a fan of that. And it would be so easy to resolve. Just make this button drop the bolt, that's it. That's all this button should ever have to do. Or you could even cut back the loading gate a little bit 
So if you do get a double feed, it'll still push the loading gate up and then just drop the other round into the dirt. I'd rather have that happen than, you know, just have a single shot shotgun because you could hit that button. You could be walking through the woods, a branch could hit it, you could bump up against the wall, bump against the tree. If you fell down and face planted, you know, you could hit that button and you're already making a bunch of noise so you probably won't hear it feed the other round in. Consider to be pretty much essential because it eliminates the only real serious design flaw in the 1301. Basically, you press this latch to close the bolt and you press the other side of the factory latch to unload the magazine tube. But if you accidentally press it on that end when you're not actually trying to unload the gun, it ejects multiple shells onto the carrier and it won't feed again until you clear the malfunction. So yeah, that, I mean, pretty much if you're going with a semi-automatic shotgun, I haven't found one yet that doesn't use that button. I haven't had a chance to hold an FN yet. Maybe they have that issue resolved, but I don't know. It should be noted the only experience I have with Benelli's is the Benelli M4, and it was only for a very short period of time, and I was unable to put dummy rounds into it. But just looking at the firearm, it appeared to be engineered the exact same as this. But I jumped on the internet trying to find a video of somebody talking about, you know, this causing a malfunction, and I couldn't. So I went to the Benelli's owner's manual, how to unload the tube. Instead of using the button, they want you to put it in there and take your finger and pull it out like this. So then I really started to doubt myself of what I had seen. So I pulled up the schematics of the gun and the actual lever appears to be engineered the exact same way as this, which are rolling pictures of this and rolling pictures of the Benelli M4. But that doesn't really mean anything. The M4 may have had some sort of safety device that I did not see at the time that prevents this button from double dropping shells. Like this and causing a malfunction. So make sure to go in the comments and look through it and see if maybe somebody posts in there who actually owns an M4. That if they have that malfunction problem or not. I also couldn't find anything about the 930 having that same malfunction problem, and I know for sure it has that problem because I did it right here. I couldn't find anything about this having that malfunction problem. All I could find was, oh, the Beretta, those idiots engineered it because of the Lucky Gunner video, that it has that problem, so I would never buy a Beretta. I would buy a Mossberg 930, something that doesn't do it, or a Benelli M4, or something that doesn't do it. So, it is what it is. Sorry if I gave you bad information, but again, if you own a Benelli M4, please perform this test and leave in the comments if it fails it or not. Now I believe the ATAC barrel is chrome lined. It's very shiny in there, but I can't tell for sure. And this firearm is manufactured in Turkey and my pig Latin's a little bit rusty, so I can't call the manufacturer and find out for sure. The 930 is for sure not chrome lined. Which makes this firearm so much cheaper than the rest of semi-automatic shotguns because chrome linings is, is expensive. Now that does have a downfall. Uh, if you're going to shoot like steel shot, flechettes, dimes, steel ball bearings, anything like that out of your barrel because this isn't chrome lined, it's going to scar up really bad. Like my Mossberg 500 barrel, the one that I destroyed and got rid of. The inside of the barrel looked like hail damage. Now I know a wadding is supposed to protect your barrel from that happening, but it still happened to mine. I don't know why, because it had a wad. Now I collected the wads and like sometimes there'd be a vein missing off of it or you'd see where the shot had pushed through and cut through the outside of the wad. So the whole barrel was scarred out. This also has a removable choke. This one does not. The 930 does not. Now with your ATAC, when you order this, you're gonna get, gonna get a plug, which will reduce the firearm down to two in the tube, one in the chamber, in case you wanna duck hunt with it. A different piston, and then a different extended choke. It looks like this right here. The Mossberg, you're gonna get a Mossberg sticker, range flag, instruction manuals. 
Now, what would I pick? Uh, out of these two shotguns, neither of them. They use ghost ring sights, and ghost ring sights really suck on shotguns. I'll just click on the little card right here if you want to see my position on it. But basically, when you mount your shotgun, your head's too low. So then you have to bring your head up, and it can cause you to miss, slows your shots down. Now on a pump action, I can kind of forgive ghost rings because, you know, you gotta pump it, it's a slower gun anyway. And I might wanna, you know, take a longer shot with it. You know, it's, it's a little bit different application. Now my semi-automatic shotgun, which I'm actually gonna be looking at the 930 Home Security because it's just like this, except it's got a standard stock and it's just got a bead sight on it. I have a different job for that. That will be the one that goes next to my bed, and I need to, that to perform like a highly trained German Shepherd with rabies protecting a litter of puppies. I want it to just unleash and open up the gates of hell, because if I'm using it and I'm in my bedroom, it, things went sideways. Obviously, I'm still going to hunt with it because hunting with a firearm and using it on the range is just different. Like, even if I were to send somebody out into my woods, you know, to set up targets, I already know there's going to be targets there. So, you're more prepared, you're more thinking about what you're doing. Now, when you're hunting, you don't know. You might not even see a target all day long. I mean, you could just pull up in your vehicle, go to get out, load a single round in there, and oh, oh, there's a target right there. You could go all day without seeing a target. I mean, you could be screwing around on your phone, you know, sending a Snapchat, all of a sudden, whoa, there's something to get. And it just, for me anyway, it kind of gives me a better feel for my firearm because then when I use it, I'm using it unexpectedly at an accelerated heart rate and just spur in the moment. And it helps me uh, get a better feel for it, which is another reason why I want a bead sight because with ghost ring sights, sometimes you'll pull up and it'll be off and you really can't tell because your head's so much higher than the firearm, you're not getting the reference of the barrel like you do with a bead sight. Now there are different semi-automatic options out there besides, you know, the 930 and this obviously. I strongly recommend you don't get the Benelli. Yes, the actual quality and construction of it's good, but the stock's about as useful as an AK underfolder. As useless as an asshole right here. Now the Benelli is completely chrome lined, which kind of turned me on to it. But the sights, the stock, total turn off, FN on all their tactical models too, they have some sort of raised ghost ring sight or raised sight, and that's not what I want on the shotgun. And I'm not the only one that feels like this. I mean, you can just look at professional videos and they'll be like, oh yeah, bead sight, this is the way to go with a shotgun, totally. And the other thing I don't like, when you hang a bunch of furniture on it like this, you have to pick your head up to see the sight. So I had to pick my head up and that kind of caused it to go a little bit to the right. I've got that mentality. I like my shotgun like, like a field gun, like a traditional shotgun. Uh, the military has a different view of what they want out of a shotgun, so this is aimed primarily at military and law enforcement guys. So this is the, this is the gun that's winning virtually every single three-gun match out there, not just in first place, but Nationals is down to probably 10th place. Everybody running this shotgun, from uh, Nils Jonathan to uh, Daniel Horner, Keith Garcia, um, you name it, uh, Brian Nelson, myself, all using this gun. It's just... You seriously do not want to go with ghost rings. But thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. Don't forget to subscribe.